Tori is such a phenomenal teacher, and so uh, be, being able to bring her in and have just really good quality teaching um, is just, it, I'm so happy about that. And so, um, yeah, does anybody remember what she talked about last week? What it was it? Parental love, the love of parents. How do we love our parents? Well, we love our parents by respecting and honoring them and actually uh, listening to them and what they say. And how many of you guys think that you know better than your parents? A lot of you guys think that you know better than your parents. You are dead wrong. Uh, your parents have been living it out a lot longer. Yeah, there may be some areas that you understand more about, like Instagram and, and all those other things. And your parents, oh, they're still stuck on Facebook. Um, but... Uh, your, your parents do know so much, and they have so much wisdom to give you. And I think the older you get, the more you realize how much wisdom your parents do have. And I realize a lot of times, like, I'm in my 30s, and I still realize that my mom knows so much more about me than I even recognize about myself. A lot of times I have a blind eye to things, but my mom uh, can see it right in me and be able to call it out. And then I'm just like, oh, ow, that hurts, Mom. Why did you talk about it that way? So, all right, let's tone it down just a touch. Okay, so uh, this last Wednesday, we talked about loving God. And what is loving God? When we are loving God, when we are expressing our love to God, what do we call that? Does anybody remember? Worship. When we express our love to God, it is worship. So it's what we just did. When we're singing songs, we're saying, hey, you can have it all, Lord. Every part of my world, take this life and breathe on this life that is now yours. That's us expressing our love to God. God, we're giving you everything of us. That is worship. That is how we love God. And we talked about this guy who comes and talks to Jesus and says, hey, um, what's the first commandment? And Jesus says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then he also says, love your neighbor as yourself. We're going to hit that verse a little bit today. But the loving God is the first thing. So we're going to talk about loving God. Next week, we're going to actually be talking about loving people. Uh, but before we can get to loving people, we believe it's important to talk about how we can love ourselves. What does it look like to love ourselves? And why does loving ourselves matter? So I'm going to pray as we get into it, and then, and then we'll go from there. Father God, I just thank you that you're here. I thank you that your presence is here. Thank you for just a great time of worship to be able to just lift it up to you. And God, we just, we just give you this time right now. And we just uh, pray that you speak through it, that you just touch our hearts, and you, you help us what, if we're struggling, if we're going through uh, depression, uh, uh, destructive thoughts, anything like that, God, I just pray that you speak through us right now. And we love you and pray this in your name. Amen. I'm going to teach fast through this. That game took a long time. So, I think in our culture today, we like to find very negative things, and that's what gossip is, because what we like to do is we find negative things and we like to talk about it. And we like to, when we gossip, it makes us feel better about ourselves because what we like to do is pinpoint things that are negative in other people so then it actually makes us feel better about ourselves. And so when the negative attention is on someone else, then we don't look as bad. So then we can feel a little better about ourselves because, hey, at least I'm not like that person because they're doing off of that. And one thing I've noticed in our American culture is that we are naturally negative. We love the crazy people on reality TV shows. They make us feel better about ourselves. We love the fights, the quarrels, the drama, because we laugh at it, and we talk about it, and it makes us feel more normal. The Bachelorette just started, and so everyone likes to laugh at the crazy guys on it, and because they bring good attention. But the reason why it gets good attention is because bad attention can go towards them, so it's at least not reflecting on the things that you don't like about yourself. And I think deep down we like them because of our own insecurities. Because deep down, we truly don't like who we've become. So each of us can think about something in us that we're insecure about. Something that we don't like about ourselves. And so we can sit there and we can watch these crazy shows and these crazy people. And we can say, hey, at least I'm not like them. But when we go to bed at night, that character that we've said, hey, at least we're not like them. Like they're crazy. It's kind of faded in the distance. And we're left with our own thoughts, and those thoughts take some negative turns. And we end up struggling to love our own selves, and we think, we're thinking so many people have it together, and we wonder why we don't. Why don't we have it together? I think Instagram kills this in us. How many of you guys have an Instagram account? I shouldn't raise my hand. 
Uh, but we scroll and scroll and scroll, and we're trying to find enjoyment knowing what is happening in other people's lives. But after 30 minutes of nighttime scroll session, we end up, we find ourselves sad and hurting. And we start to ask, why wasn't I doing the fun things at the beach that my friends were doing? Why didn't I get invited to that party or that friend session? Why, doesn't it, why, why does it seem like I'm poor and all my friends can buy all their AirPods that they want, all these other toys that they want? Why does it seem like I don't have any friends? Is there something wrong with me? And we start to wallow in our pity and we become sad. And sadness turns into self-destructive thoughts, and we start to tell ourselves that something is wrong with us, and we, we have friends, but we don't have that close best friend that everyone is seeking after, and it seems like everyone else has that, and so we think that we're too boring, we're too mean, we're too ugly, we're too fat to fill in the blank, whatever it is. And we don't love ourselves well. And our culture is actually a very sad, in a very sad situation right now because I've seen it happen over these last 10 years being in youth ministry that the overall happiness of students has gone down and the pressures are going up. And because of this, it's hard to love ourselves because we don't live up to the expectations that we feel like we're supposed to be hitting. We think there's something wrong with us, and so our self-destructive thoughts turn into self-destructive behaviors, and we run towards things that make us feel better, but we don't like who we've become. I believe everyone in this room struggles with loving themselves in some form or another. Some, it's very apparent. They talk about it. They talk about their small groups, and, oh, I just don't like myself. I don't like how I've turned out. I don't like my actions, and they're very open about it. But others, and these are the more dangerous ones, are reserved, and they don't talk about it. And they stew it over in their head and they think, but they don't talk and express it towards anyone. And I think all of us struggle to some degree of not loving ourselves or loving something about ourselves. So if we struggle with loving ourselves, what do we do? Do we just try to continue with these self-encouraging talks like, no, you got this. I can do this. And you just keep talking to yourself up. Or do we work really hard just so people will like us? Because if people like us, then I'll like myself. And do we gossip more to try to make ourselves look better than the other people? And so we can get the attention off, the the bad attention on them and not on us? Do we lash back at others on Instagram hoping to tear them down? Because since you're feeling pretty duty, then you're going to bring them down too. But that's not the answer. These are, these are not the things, because what you're trying to do is you're trying to fix the problem yourself. Instead of allowing God to do it. So to be able to live a spiritually healthy life, we have to do something different. We have to see ourselves from a different lens. And the answer is learning about the truth of who you were created to be. To learn to love ourselves, we need to learn who we are in God's eyes, in God's image. And it has nothing to do with the work that we're doing. It has everything to do with a shift of thinking to what God has already done. So here are four reasons. I didn't put them up here, sorry. But I have four reasons of why we can love ourselves. The first one is, number one, we are made in the image of God. We can love ourselves because if we love God, we're made in the image of God. So, hey, we can love ourselves. I think this is the coolest thing. We aren't created as animals to just roam this earth. We're created with a thought process. We're created with a soul, with feelings. We are created to rule over the earth as human beings. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That's powerful. We're made in the image of God. But then what God says, after he created humans... After the first five days, he created animals, and he's like, hey, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Then he created humans, and then he looked at everything. He said, then God looked over all he made, and he saw that it was very good. God is very proud of who he created you to be as image bearers of God. We have to remember that the Lord created and loves you, and that's reason enough for you to care for yourself and to love yourself spiritually, physically, and emotionally. God was very purposeful when he made you. He created you with so much purpose. And so many of us beat ourselves up because we're like, why am I on earth? What am I here on earth for? We start to think those questions 
or ask those questions, but really what the heart of it is, is God created you with purpose to be here on this earth. So when you have purpose, you need to seek it out in God, and you'll be reminded that you are created in the image of God. Not only are we made in the image of God, Jesus speaks that we need to love ourselves too. Mark, this is the memory verse for this week if you go to life groups. So Mark 12, 30, 31 says, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? I think there's two points here. Next week we'll talk about loving your neighbor. But I think it's really important for us to also recognize that we still need to love ourselves. No other commandment is greater than these. Jesus makes it very clear in the Bible that it's essential to love God and to love others. But Jesus is also very clear that we need to love ourselves too. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't love others well. When we can't love ourselves well, then we can't love others well. When people understand that they are made in the image of God and that their identity is in Christ, then they are more capable of loving others because they see others as image bearers of God. So when, you are capable, when, when they are capable of loving themselves well, they can love others well. And when you're a negative person, you're going to be negative towards others. When you're always negative about yourself, negative about your surroundings, you're always going to be negative towards other people. But when you're positive and you understand who you are in Christ, then you're going to be positive and encouraging to other people. I've seen this all the time. People lash out because they're hurt. They lash out because they're hurting, and, and, and they don't see themselves in good light. I truly believe counseling is good for this, because, and I do it myself, and people go to counseling because of the way they're acting out towards others and they hurt others, they hurt their parents, they hurt their friends, they hurt their boyfriend, girlfriend, they hurt their kids. Because they're acting out negatively, they go to counseling trying to figure out what the issue is, and I believe that 99% of the time their issue is deeply rooted in the way that they love themselves and the way that they see themselves. They don't love others well because they don't see themselves well because of their past hurts or their past mistakes. So when we learn to love ourselves, then we can actually learn to love others well, that's the very reason why we're talking about loving ourselves now, and next week we're talking about loving others. Because we can't love others well if we don't love ourselves. So the second point, reason why we can love ourselves, number two, is we are considered children of God. We're considered children of God. This is very important for us to understand. We aren't here to be slaves of God, to just do whatever he tells us to do. He's not, he doesn't like whip us into shape and say, you better be good, you better be good. And if you're not, you're going to get punished. No, no, no. We're children of God. Galatians 3.26 says, for, for you are children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Your children of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, 4, 6, just a little bit further down in Galatians. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. So a slave is expected to do all the work. Have this list, check it off, I've done it. I'm good. A slave is someone, some, some, you, you get rewarded for the work that you do based off how much work you put into it. A child, on the other hand, they already received it. They've already received the gift from the father because that's his son. That's his daughter. And it says at the end of this, this verse that we just read that God has made you his heir. What is an heir? It's someone who's going to receive the inheritance. The inheritance is the money that, that the father has, the, the, the promised things. My, my family is, uh, my, my parents are getting older. My, my dad's almost 70. Um, my, my mom is as well. And so they're, my mom's actually outlived her mom. And so she's really nervous that her time is almost up. And so that, like, that's really hard and it's scary to think of because it's like, that's my parents, but they're getting older. And so my family has all kind of like made tabs on the family furniture. My dad built a, a grandfather clock. And so my brother has already called out, hey, I get the grandfather clock. We have other furniture that has been passed down to my parents 
from my great-grandparents, and that stuff that my siblings have all said, hey, I want that piece of furniture because that's been in our family for over 100 years. We don't have to work for that. It's just going to, we're just going to receive it when we're ready. And that's the great thing about what God talks about. Is that when we are children of God, we have already received his promise. So what is this inheritance? Well, we get to see it through what Jesus received. And there's so many passages in the Bible that talk about where Jesus went. And Jesus was at able to sit at the right hand of the Father as he entered heaven. And so we get to receive the same treatment, not because of our good works, but because we are children of God, because we have Christ. We can love ourselves because we receive the promised inheritance of the Father. What's not to celebrate about that? We were created in the image of God to be his children, So he loves us just as we are. And if the creator is giving us his inheritance, then we can love ourselves because we've already won because of Christ. We don't have to beat ourselves up and say, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm a terrible person, all this other stuff. No, we just have to receive the inheritance from God and trust in him, and then he starts to work in us. The third point, God loves us just as we are. God loves us just as we are. We have been chosen by him. He loves us. He made us. We are called very good. We are his children. God doesn't make mistakes. And when you don't love yourself, it's because you're probably sitting there saying, man, I'm just a mistake. I'm just a big mistake. And I think many of us in this room have felt that before. And we've cried ourselves asleep thinking, I'm just a mistake. I'm just, I'm terrible. But let me be clear. You are not a mistake because you are created by God. You are not a mistake. God loves you just as you are right now. God loves you just as you are right now. But he loves you so much that he doesn't want you to stay there. He doesn't want you to stay there. He wants you to continue to grow in understanding of who you are in Christ. God loves you so much where you're at right now, but he loves you so much that he doesn't want you to stay where you're at right now. Here's the thing that we understand. We all sin. Romans 3.23 says, For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. We have to allow ourselves to not beat ourselves up because of our sin and our past. God loves us just the way we are, flaws and all. But Jesus died so that we may have forgiveness of sin, and he didn't expect us to clean it up for him before we came to him. No, the price has already been paid. John 3, 16 says, For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That goes back to we are children of God. We receive his promise and his inheritance. And he loves us just as we are. That's the reason why he sent his son. And the price has been paid with Christ. So what are we beating ourselves up for in our heads? God loves us as we are, so we can love ourselves as Christ Jesus loves us. And in fact, check out this passage. This is how much God loves us. If God loves us this much, then we should be able to love ourselves. Okay, this is Matthew 10, 29 to 31. What's the price of a pet canary? Some loose change, right? And God cares that God cares what happens to it even more than you do. He pays even greater attention to you down to the last detail, even numbering the hairs on your head. So don't be intimidated by all this bully talk, all this negative emotions that you're feeling. You're worth more than a million canaries. What is that saying? You can be all messed up, you can be hurting yourself, but what's God's response? You're worth it to him. You're worth it. He loves you as you are. You're worth it. You don't have to beat yourself up. You're worth it to him. He loves you just as you are. And the last thing that I noticed too, love to us is, uh, it, it comes in seasons. 
We sometimes love ourselves more. Sometimes we love ourselves less. It's just kind of, our love does this. It's all based off of feelings, right? We're going to talk about that in life groups this week, about what, what is love? Well, we, we feel like it's, it's just all based off these feelings. But the point number four is this season won't last. These ups and downs. Hey, it's not going to last. Many times we beat ourselves up because, not because we hate ourselves, but we beat ourselves up because of the season that we're in. How could I make that mistake? Why am I going through this? We can't love ourselves based off the situation, the conditions that we're going in currently, or we're in currently. We might have screwed up, made a mistake. Maybe we didn't get invited to a party. We don't feel loved by other people, so we don't love ourselves. We need to understand that these situational things don't mean that it's our whole lives. I have friends who I've talked to who get turned down for one job, and they turn around and say, oh, I have no purpose. Like, I didn't even get my job. My whole life sucks. I'll never get a job again. And it's like, that's such a small thing. And then you make it into, like, your whole life. How many of you guys have done that before, where you've taken one situation and made it seem like it's basically ruined your whole life? Anybody there? Like, it's, it's like, yeah, it, we do it all the time. And we need to name the things that are hurting us and why it's hard to love ourselves and recognize that it's based off situational things that will come to pass. We can't just love ourselves based off the season we're in. Oh, I'm in a good season, so I love myself. Oh, I'm in a bad season. I'm terrible. I mean, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But God is not situational. God is not situational. God is constant. And there's, there's a word in the New Testament, in the Greek New Testament, that is used constantly with the word love. It's the most powerful love there is, and it's the word called agape. And that, the agape love, there's different types of love in the Greek New Testament, but the agape love is the one that's used the most because it especially talks about God's love. And the agape love is always constant, always pursuing it's unconditional. It's not based off the conditions that you're going through. It's just, here's the love. God gives it, no matter what. It doesn't come in seasons. It's always there, no matter what. We are loved by God so much that Christ gave himself up so that we may live. And it's a constant agape love. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in in my body, I live by faith, indeed, by the faithfulness of God's Son, who loved me and gave himself for me. So Jesus loved us so much that he gave him, himself to us so that we can have new life in him. That we can now live in Christ and see ourselves through Christ's eyes, which is dearly loved with agape love. No matter what you say or do will separate you from the love that Christ has. Second Corinthians 5 17 says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. The new life has begun. We have a new life in Christ when we fully understand his love for us. This is our identity. This is who we are in Christ. And part of loving ourselves is finding out who God wants us to be and aspire to become that person. And it's not who he wants us to be just on our own, who he wants us to be in him. When I say, hey, aspire to be that person and who, do, who does God want us to be? That doesn't mean a firefighter or a doctor or, or a nurse or a stay-at-home mom or whatever. That's not who God created you to be. Yes, maybe that's part of your purpose. No, God created you, your full purpose, to worship him and to love him and to love others. Who cares about your profession? But are you doing that? So your identity is in Christ, and when, you're, when you understand your identity in Christ, you're able to love yourself better. And you may be going through a season of despair and not loving yourself, but we have to understand that it's just a season that you're in, and that you have to tell yourself the truth of who Christ is in you. And the teenage years are some of the hardest to go through. But know that these things will change. It gets better. And when you continue to tell the truth of who you are in Christ, then you'll be able to get through this season and understand that you are still loved and that you, you are able to love yourself. Some of us, when we're laying down, going to bed, and we can't sleep because our minds are racing, and we tell ourselves all the reasons why we're not lovable, 
We always keep finding the wrong about ourselves. Remind yourselves about your identity. It's not in what others say you are. It's not even what you say you are. Because how many of you guys know that you lie to yourself all the time about who you are? I lie to myself all the time. You're terrible. How dare you? That's not who God says I am. No, God says I'm a child of his. We are created in his image, and my identity is in who he says I am as his child, and we are loved just as we are. I don't have to worry because the feeling, the situations that I'm in has nothing to do with God because he's constant. So when we're wallowing in our misery and we think that there is something wrong with us, the way we love ourselves is by telling ourselves the truth of who we are in God. And if God, the author and creator, loves us, then we can love ourselves. I want to close with this passage, 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be holy people. We're all chosen by God. God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him. To tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. From nothing to something. From rejected to accepted. When we don't love ourselves, it's because we feel rejected. But what are we? We're accepted. No matter what. So let me pray. Father God, I just thank you for this morning. I thank you for this time that we're able to just uh, give worship to you. And God, I pray for anyone who's just really struggling right now in their heart, uh, just wallowing or just feeling very negative about themselves, hard to love themselves. God, I pray that uh, we have peace over our hearts. And I pray that you speak to us, Lord, and that you change us and you move us and, and just know that we can, we can just be all in with you and have full trust in you, God. We love you so much, and we pray that this time of worship, just we can just sing it out to you. Pray this in your name. Amen. We have one more song. Uh, let's stand up and sing. It's a new one as well.